hey everyone uh, welcome to another interview uh, and today i have aradhya with me he is currently pursuing his masters in uh, san diego state university sdsu uh, in big data analytics right uh, he is a 4.0 gpa student and he has already secured um, an internship in amazon so i'm very excited about this particular interview uh, but with that would you like to give a short intro uh, aradhya so uh, as uh... Nitin said, I am a graduate student at San Diego State University in Big Data Analytics. I completed my undergrad from India in Computer Science. I am a, other than Amazon, I am also a part of Mock Lab, that is Metabolism of Cities Living Lab at San Diego State University. And I have recently joined a, a AI for Business Lab. So it is also working on uh, stuff related to data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence. got it got it that is pretty exciting now let's deep dive let's get started uh, one of the first questions which i always ask um, in all of my videos about whenever i'm interviewing someone is uh, how has been your experience so far with the pursuing masters in san diego state university and if you have to give like top 3 things which you really like about san diego state university what will be those things? three things so my experience with san diego state university until now is really good like the faculties here are extremely experienced uh, like some of my faculties have been teaching uh, in their particular domain for like more than 20 years mm -hmm. and uh, apart from this uh, we usually have a sdsu go trip kind of stuff happening in our university so what this trips are they as san diego is a place to explore i think and uh, they every weekend they take us to different places in san diego like zoo uh, say safari park sometimes i went to birch aquarium and there are many places to visit in san diego and particularly speaking next week i am going to los angeles through those trips only and uh, yeah those trips are for free the uh, the most important part that's awesome yeah those, <laughs> those trips are for free other than that i think uh, there are many activities going on campus so mm -hmm. like uh, so it is an active campus mostly there are like uh, events related to graduation or say some events uh, like this year san diego state university completed its 125 years so there were oh. events, yeah there there are events happening there other than that uh, i would say weather like weather of san diego is really good um like in winters it doesn't uh, drops below 6 degrees or 5 degrees celsius and in uh, summers it do, uh, it never goes beyond 30 degrees there are some days where heat wave happens but even in, uh, on that day it goes maximum to 35 degrees lastly but last uh, last but not the least uh san diego's transportation public transportation is really good i can go from any place to any other place uh, it just takes more time but yeah the connectivity is really good so that is good yeah. that is good and specifically out of this i really love the go trip part uh i feel uh, when you come united, when a lot of times people come to united states uh, uh they have to spend money to explore the areas yeah. around absolutely some places like uh, san diego zoo which is the world's biggest zoo and it is a really beautiful place so the uh, prices for uh, their tickets are like 62 dollars or say mm -hmm. 70 dollars and we, we get those things for free so for yeah. our birch aquarium even uh, balboa park so balboa park there is some other other thing happening so that you know it it keeps you engaged in all this Think yeah. From yeah 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 and i really like me and my wife uh, we both love actually uh, san diego weather as well i think out of our last three marriage anniversaries we have been to san diego or i think all three times <laughs> or our yeah, yeah. so we we love actually san diego yeah, uh, the uh, beaches here are absolutely good and there are many places to explore in san diego itself like yeah. it will take me a lot of time to explore all of them but yeah it yeah. is really a good place mm -hmm. yes 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 definitely definitely um, um we i have ex personally ex like we both have explored a lot of places in san diego uh, the only thing which is remaining is i want to cross the mexican border once 
uh, and come back. Yeah. That's one of the two items I have. Uh, Actually, I, I I had some information that we can uh, we can go uh, on US visa. We can go to Mexico for like forty eight hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can go and come back. So yeah. uh, uh, that's pretty. But that's for another interview. Uh, <laughs> so moving on. Uh, the next question generally parents will have or even the students will have uh, when they are planning their masters right and they are selecting the one of shortlisting universities from their admits is what is the overall expense or what is the total money that i will be required to put in in okay, this case so, yeah so uh, i would divide the expense into tuition fees and living expenses Firstly, the tuition fees for first three semesters is nearly $8,500 for each semester. And for the last semester, if you take one course, then it will uh, you will end up paying up around $5,000. Mm -hmm. For living expenses, it depends on the individual. So, um, yeah, like I live in a very, very good community and it is not a student housing. So, uh, we even get many amenities. So, I, I end up paying like Eight fifty to nine hundred dollars at max. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for other students who live nearby campus or are in student housing, uh, will are paying like around six hundred to seven hundred dollars. Got it. Yeah. Got it. So about uh, about thirty to thirty two thousand dollars for uh, your masters, and then uh, I think it would be safe to say around fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars, eighteen thousand dollars for your uh, yeah. you know living yeah right so if you have around 50 to 60 thousand dollars just with some buffer yeah. you should be good yeah. for the whole masters Absolutely. Right? Uh, in terms of and just to uh, like kind of double click on the same topic uh, uh, in terms of living right uh, what are those top two or three places where generally students live uh, are they close to the university or if they are a little bit far, then how is the commute and everything? So uh, nearby the university, there are Campanile apartments, which provide uh, uh, housing. It is uh, in the university only, like it is mm -hmm. too close to university, like a five minute walk from the library. Mm -hmm. Apart from that, there are some apartments like Diplomat, Dorchester and Pank House. They have their own shuttles available. Mm -hmm. So um, it is like a one mile distance from the university. And the apartment which in I live is Gravity Apartments. It it, it is like uh, it is at a, at some distance from the university, but uh, the thing is uh, we have a direct connection to the public transport. Mm -hmm. So it it takes me like twenty minutes to reach the university. Got it. Got it. And is the public transport uh, pretty safe? Uh, I'm just asking from the perspective of girls as well because generally in US the uh, classes are in evening six to nine so in the night time or during your exams you might study in library so is it safe to come back uh, so in night i don't think it is that safe but uh, because um, all those places that are connected to the trolleys are a little shady mm -hmm. have homeless people around so you mm -hmm. might get scared but uh, yeah it, it is pretty good yeah, yeah. They have all the cameras and security systems in their trolleys and buses, so it's not that big issue. Got it, got it. And I think one of the ways people tackle this is by traveling in groups. Like yeah. even in San Jose, where uh, I went to San Jose State University, so now we have certain areas which are kind of shady. There are a lot of homeless people. So uh, what people do is they travel in a groups of five, ten. Uh, because the class, uh, most of the times, a lot of uh, students in the class are Indians. And uh, so when they're going back, they go together. That way it is pretty safe. Yeah. Uh, are there shuttles also provided by San Diego State University in the night? Like, let's say late nights, are there shuttles which go from stop to stop? Actually, uh, earlier I was looking for an on-campus and library. Uh, the library has one. But I don't think uh, SDSU personally they will have because there are like 30,000 students all over in the university. So it, it might not be possible for them. Got it. Got it. Got it. Um, just to, I was just trying to relate it with something which SDSU has. So in SDSU, uh, during the exam times, there will be shuttles, uh, which will be there for, I think, every after every 30 minutes or uh, after every one hour. 
till 2 or 3 o'clock in the night so and they will go to different stops near the communities and they will drop students actually uh, i'm not sure on that point but yeah mm -hmm. I'll, i'll definitely explore this thing in my university itself so, yeah got it got Just it just telling me that <laughs> uh, uh but yeah let's move on let's move on so the next topic which i uh, i think uh, which comes to the mind is curriculum now i think just for me and a lot of people who are watching now your course is big data analytics course right um and just for the pur pe purpose of people or parents who are watching is it same as data science or it's little bit different than data science um uh, and that is the first part of the question and okay. then so, how is the quality of your program so uh, it is absolutely same as data science it covers mm -hmm. all the topics that uh, i think they are important for data science like mm -hmm. statistics database management systems python and machine learning all those things are covered apart from this the course is an introductory course so you definitely you have many options to uh, explore uh, like many many courses the best part of big data analytics course i like it might not be the best part for everyone but mm -hmm. i like is that we can take courses from different departments like mm -hmm. for example i can take courses from computer science department too i can take courses from mis department too and mm -hmm. i can take courses from my big data analytics department too mm -hmm. so i can choose between like for example a mis department course which is having a database management course and a computer science department having a database management course So mm -hmm. the course which more inclines towards my interest or uh, the course which i think i will be learning more i can go towards that okay mm -hmm. apart from this this can be a drawback of this uh, course also because many a times for computer science courses we uh, we can't register uh, earlier we we have to mm -hmm. wait for some time and and during those times the almost the seats are gone and we have to be in the wait list Mm -hmm. so this is what the thing is and the course here is really good the as i said the faculties in sdsu are having a really good experience like professor roger with me professor ming mm -hmm. the last semester i took a subject of professor uh, robert melo mm -hmm. so, uh, he he is from stanford and he has done many patents got it so this is uh, the course is really good i prefer got it got it um um uh, just a follow up question on that what you said is you can take uh, courses from other departments which is really good uh, i think that is something which was there in sjsu as well uh, so the question i have is is there a cap on how many courses from other departments that you can take uh, no it is not like that so mm -hmm. you can take as many as courses from other departments but the thing is uh, you need to complete the core courses of big data analytics but for the core courses also you can take the alternatives mm. that's what got it. It yeah got it got it and i i believe it is based on some specific specializations within those big data that if yeah. you are going to very specific uh, like skill set even within big data for that they have these electives yeah so uh, we have four electives and four core courses but those four core core, core courses can also be replaced by alternatives as, as i said mm. so yeah yeah that is that is a really nice thing so, that is good that is good that is good uh, now uh, deep diving on the same topic uh, what i believe and this has been like my personal experience that in your generally in a master's course there are about 3 to 4 courses which you know really make difference in your resume like they the projects that you do in those courses show up on your resume the skill set will show up on your resume so let's say in your course what would those three or four or maybe two those courses be so uh, the top three courses which i think uh, i should suggest to anyone coming to san diego state university are the first course is cs649 that is big data tools uh, taken by uh, dr roger witten Mm-hmm. It is a course which teaches you the advanced pandas part mm -hmm. to emulate to Spark. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is really a challenging course, but the uh, assignments or the projects which we get in uh, that course are really uh, you know like really challenging, and they they give a lot of knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
The second course which I would suggest is MIS 686. That is an enterprise database management system course by mm -hmm. Dr. Goldberg. So uh, what this course is, this, this is basically SQL and PHP, but the way the professor teaches is really good. Like earlier, I didn't knew much about X, uh, SQL, but after taking that course, uh, now I can perform in various uh, platforms like on lead code and hacker rank uh, for SQL. Mm -hmm. course and uh, which is like, which is really an important course is BDS 602. That is a machine learning course. Mm -hmm. That course is again a really, uh, you know, like a really challenging course. It is one of the most difficult courses in the big data analytics part. But again, the knowledge, knowledge gaining part of that course is really good. That is good. I think this will really help someone who is watching. Yeah. Um, and guys, if you're uh, still here watching the uh, and you got all these courses, comment them in the comment section below. Okay. Uh, but yeah, let's move on. Let's shift gear a little bit. Now we know the uh, expenses. We understood what is tuition fees and everything. We understood the curriculum. The next part, which people want to know, is um, about on-campus jobs, right? Um, and scholarships. So, how how are the opportunities for on-campus job in San Diego State University? Do generally people get on-campus jobs? And if there are like two or three tricks which you can share, uh, you know, uh, which can help people. So uh, yes there are definitely many on-campus jobs going in San Diego State University. The best trick I would like to suggest is apply early because uh, there are many departments which uh, which like their vacancies get filled very soon. Mm -hmm. So you must mail the professors about uh, uh, getting an opportunity for RA or GA and like I also mailed prof many professors for that. And finally, I got an on-campus job. For the first semester, I didn't got one because I was too late. My admit came very late and all the jobs were already filled up. Mm -hmm. The second semester, I got them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is good. That is good. Um, and generally, the on, uh, um, at least my experience was that once you have an on-campus job, you're pretty much able to pay off your uh, living expenses. Yes. Even uh, like, for example, it totally depends on number of hours you are working. For example, you are working for 10 hours, you will make around 700 to $800. If you are working 20 hours, then you will make around 13 to $1,400. So you mm. can easily save on that and you can earn. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, no, that, that makes sense. That makes sense. Uh, now moving on, uh, the next question I have is about, uh, uh, you know, internship search. Uh, and uh, and job search. Now I know we are going to go in a little bit more detail about your journey, but if you had to give like two or three tips about, uh, uh, you know, uh, the support that you have in San Diego State University for getting you the internship, like job fairs, uh, there is career center. Uh, can you uh, share about that? So um, there are uh, job fairs happening in our university, but the thing which is important to note is whether the companies coming to those job fairs are really uh, are hiring for your uh, like your or not yeah mm -hmm. uh, like until now i have faced four uh, job fairs in our university even the last time which i attended before my amazon internship um, there were many companies like Amazon, even Salesforce. Uh, I don't think Salesforce was there, but there were many companies, but they all were hiring for, for management uh, courses or management students. Apart from this, uh, for big data analytics, uh, usually our advisors mail us for the opportunities which, which they get, uh, which are open in the market. They usually mail us about the open opportunities for internships or say, or full time. So the support from the university is also good. Uh, but again, uh, the internship part, I would say uh, totally depends on the individual because, you know, uh, even I applied for many internships and getting a call for the interview is a big thing rather than, you know, like facing the interview because you, uh, the resume gets shortlisted and, you know, like in one in a thousand, uh, like applications or like 100 uh, 100 applications so this is the thing. 
got it got it uh, all right i think that helps uh, so moving on i think the last question which i generally ask um, is um, so let's say now if someone is coming here uh, right he uh, he or she like they they have finalized that okay fall 22 they are coming here uh, right uh, so if you have to give only three tips to someone who is coming uh, what would those three tips be so the first tip I would like to give is register for the classes as soon as possible. Like you just have to pay the basic tuition fees and then you can register for the classes. Apart from that, um, like if you don't get an on-campus job, don't get demotivated or like feel distracted. Uh, you should focus on internships also in the first semester because applying to internships and doing an on-campus job um, parallelly is a little difficult, I think. But yeah, it is manageable. And the last thing is, um, yeah, be prepared <laughs> before you come because uh, I was uh, like, I was not prepared for many other things. Like for example, uh, in India, we have our scooters and two wheelers to travel around, but here we don't have traveling in the you know, public transport and all those things. So be prepared. But yeah, the journey is really good. <laughs> uh, yes, I think that was that was a really good tip. Uh, you know, when you come here, uh, a lot of things change, including the education system. So, uh, you know, guys, definitely be prepared. And I would say be excited about what you're going to experience. Yes, you will enjoy it more, uh, uh, you know. Uh, but thank you so much for answering all these questions, Aradhya. Uh, I know we are going to do a part two of this, uh, but uh, thank you so much. I am pretty sure this all of this information is going to help, uh, you know, anyone who is watching. Uh, thank you. Uh, pleasure. <laughs> uh, but all right. So let's begin with uh, the part two. Um, now, in this part, what we're going to talk about specifically is your journey of... Um, getting an internship at Amazon. Um, and I would, uh, I would love to talk about some of the things uh, where like, what were some of the surprises that you got during inter internship search? Uh, uh, then uh, uh, what were some of the new habits that you built, right? Um, and those kind of things. But let's maybe start with uh, how was your overall experience with internship search? So uh, internship search and grabbing an internship in United States, I think is uh, like one of the most challenging parts because uh, um, like, you know, when I was uh, applying for internships, I, in Amazon itself, I applied for more than like say seven positions, but I got rejected for all of them. And only one, I got shortlisted for the, this particular data science intern position. After that, I would like to suggest that um, take your time for the interview preparation because uh, there are many things that you learn during the interview interview positions uh, which you don't know. Like for example, for me, the most important part for uh, interview preparation was like grabbing SQL and doing some Python code, like problem solving coding. But yes, I took a time of say 10, 12 days. So I was able to do that. Mm -hmm. Apart from this, you many students will or even every student faces rejections like you know even today after getting an internship i get rejection mails from different companies but it is all right it is all okay you uh, build your network to get an internship talk to the recruiters talk to the people who can refer you in the internship for the internship and you will definitely land them got it got it uh, now, going into a little bit details of uh, your preparation part, right? So uh, let's say if someone is looking to build their profile for data science, right? Uh, so what were some of the things that you did, which you could recommend someone um, who is asking? Yeah, I divided my preparation in four parts. The first part was about the coding, like the problem solving thing. The second part was about my SQL coding and the third part was my machine learning and data science concepts, learning about machine learning and data science concepts. And the last part was behavioral round. Mm. Like people ignore behavioral round, but I think that particular thing played a key role in my selection. 
because mm-hmm. i was not good at um, you know hr interviews i i usually messed up things in the hr interview itself mm-hmm. yes preparing for uh, that to and giving an answer confidently makes the thing possible in the coding part like in the python or the problem solving coding part what you can do is you can practice on lead code or hacker rank for sql also i would suggest you should go with some basic queries because in internship i don't think they look for any advanced part of sql but they mm-hmm. just hope that you know an intermediate level of uh, sql coding because my coding interview had 75% of that uh, sql and the tables joining things and all those things mm-hmm. so for sql you can go for uh, you know doing lead code hacker rank and all those things for the machine learning and data science concepts i i prepared it from a book from nick singh and mm-hmm. i even prepared for the interview questions available on internet mm-hmm. so that that gave me an edge over anything and lastly for the behavioral round as we know amazon has its own leadership principles right i tried connecting those leadership principles with the say behavioral round and my resume Mm. it played a key role apart from all this try giving mock interviews mm. giving mock interviews uh checks uh, gives you a self check whether you are going in the correct direction or not mm-hmm. before that i even interviewed for different companies like twiddle sandag and nasdaq but uh, i never gave the mock interview but when i gave a mock interview for amazon it played a you know a key role or say a mo- the most important thing i learned in the in those interviews are like uh, many a times i lose on confidence and many a times i give wrong answers so those things were cleared in those mock interviews so got it giving got mock it. interviews helps you a lot got it and for giving mock interviews did you use pramp pramp.io and then there is interviewing.io actually uh-huh. i i didn't use that but uh, mm-hmm. i i asked my seniors one of my uh, cousins is in google so i asked him please take my mock interview and then he he just told me that this uh, this is going in the wrong direction i even mm-hmm. asked my roommates about that and they they also helped me a lot for this that is good that is good so guys if you have um relatives or your friends who are already working in the industry i think that is another great source of you know uh, uh, getting that experience of mock interviews uh, uh, now i want to uh, deep dive a little bit in the networking part uh, so uh, uh, and before we go there actually let me take a step back and since we are done with the preparation part i would like to deep dive into the application part first where like what was your routine uh, for application i'm pretty sure you must have got like when you wake up you must have seen some rejections every day uh, you know so uh, how was your experience with application did you build any new habits around that and uh, if you can share yeah so for the application part um, the first thing i kept in mind was my cover letter many companies ask for cover letter or they ask you for a reason why you want to join them mm so i prepared a sample draft of a cover letter which included all those answers right mm-hmm. so whenever i needed to apply for a company i just um, like copied and pasted that answers because any anyways you can apply faster uh, using those things yeah yeah for uh, applying i i made a schedule you know like i am a very uh, uh discipline kind of person so i make a schedule for everything so whenever i came back home i used to apply to the internships i made an art for that like before sleeping i i have to apply for internships other than that uh, many people suggested me but uh, i like i didn't apply it uh, they say that you can read the description the job description and modify your resume accordingly Mm. but this might be helpful but this can be dangerous to you know like in the interviews mm-hmm. so i avoided doing that but yeah um, i i was too prepared with my resume for the interview okay mm-hmm. so uh, and 
modifying the resume over the period of time uh, also helped me a lot got it i i used to send my resume to different people who are already in the industry and ask them that uh what things i can improve in my resume and they suggested me that like for example i i used to write a career objective in my resume and i asked many people they said that there is no need to add career objective you should add experience at the top and education in the lower end so this again this played an important role for application got it got it uh, i have heard that Uh, your resume gets into a software and it catches the keywords so try adding some numbers to your resume or say the technology which you used in your projects in the resume it can mm-hmm. help you a lot yeah got it got it um, um and so i know there is one really nice uh, pretty sophisticated actually uh, free tool it's called as resumeworded.com i don't know whether you have tried it uh but uh that tool also helps in reviewing your resume and you know highlighting a lot of uh improvements you know based on different perspectives yeah. uh, like action verbs uh, if you are doing adding the numbers and all of that so uh, have you used that or uh, yeah i i used uh, i used that too and adding to that even in san diego state university you have career cell for really mm. for big data analytics um, right the big data analytics is in different college so that particular college has their career cell mm-hmm. they provided me some content related to you know making resume and you know having all those things on spot so the action words thing and all were also suggested by them and uh, i also use that uh, resume word mm-hmm. yeah. got it got it uh Uh, now moving on to the uh, last part uh, and in this part i want to uh, this i want to focus this particular part uh, specifically on the amazon experience like let's say if there's a person who has amazon ex- uh, interview scheduled right uh, what would be those uh, top 3 uh, you know tips that you would give him or her okay so uh, the steps I, i would like to share the steps of amazon interview firstly the manager or the hiring manager contacts you they ask you for some dates for scheduling an interview make sure that you at least select a date uh, like 20 days or 15 days after, after your da- mail right mm-hmm. before your preparation because i selected a date uh, within 12 days and there were many thoughts like i should reschedule the date but i i just stick on i just stick on that because you know i already had one internship at nasdaq mm-hmm. so, so i i went with going going through the interview because uh, on the day one, uh, on the last day you have many thoughts that you are not prepared you you should reschedule the interview and should you know like prepare for more but i think 15 to 20 days of time is sufficient uh, for a data science intern position if you already have some experience and be prepared with your resume mm-hmm. because the interviewer i think will ask mostly from your resume only mm-hmm. my second my second interview happened from my resume even the behavioral questions like the leadership principle questions and the data science concept questions all were asked from the resume Mm-hmm. so you should be damn confident on your resume that you you should not uh, miss out on anything uh, and you should like be confident definitely uh, this things happened with me earlier whenever i faced the interview i i usually lose some kind of confidence and then i just messed up things many a times mm-hmm. yeah at that time i was confident and i gave the interview very well got it got it got it and i think one of the and just to add to that answer uh, one of the things which i have uh, learned from my uh, conversations with other folks who cracked amazon is uh, they have this leadership principles and i think they are very big on you having a very good experience in those leadership principles so the activity which has helped a lot of folks is uh, noting down the first of all knowing the leadership principles and then having at least couple of stories from your personal experience for each of those principles yeah. so that when uh, you are question when you are inquired about these 
particular uh, scenarios in behavioral round specifically you would you would have those stories already ready for yourself yeah actually i i prepared for all those questions there are many youtube videos which uh, which for every leadership principle they have uh, the questions type of questions asked so you can prepare uh, uh, parallelly for that yeah. yeah got it got it uh, but thank you so much aradya all of these questions uh, i had and you answered them really patiently thank you so much for that uh, it was really good to have you uh, on my channel uh, hopefully you enjoyed it too uh, uh, you know uh, and guys if you like uh, the uh, if you found some tips definitely mention them in the comment section below uh, and i'll see you in the next video